It's actually after the 4th of July. A lot of folks tend to think that after the 4th of July, the fire risk actually goes down. Not necessarily the case. Um, in fact, as the season goes on and we get less rain, we get more heat, the, the relative humidity of the, the fuels and of the soils drop down, we actually have a higher fire risk. So one of the things I want to start off talking today is about is creating a defensible space around your property, whether it's a home or whether it's a business. And what we like to recommend is a defensible space of around 100 feet. The first 30 feet around your house or around your business, we would like to have what we call lean, clean, and green. Lean being there's no fuels there, there's no trees, there's no dead grass. Clean meaning you've cleaned out all that stuff. If you've got a pile of firewood next to your house, move it back at least away 30 feet. So if we get a fire coming through, that firewood, if it catches on fire, is not going to be right next to your house or your home. And then green. If you have an opportunity and you have a lawn, try to keep it green enough so that it's not going to burn. Please don't overwater it because we do have water issues on the peninsula here, but if you can keep some green to it, that's great. Then the next 70 feet or out to your property line, we don't have to go down quite as much. You can have a few more shrubs, a little bit more of trees and things like that, but we want to be careful of a couple things. Number one, we want to have some space in between those, that plant growth so that if you do have a small fire or a fire across the street, as it comes into it, it doesn't have the opportunity to move from brush to brush or bush to bush. The other thing we want to have is your trees. We want to have them cleaned up to about 10 feet so that you don't have opportunity from fire that's on the ground to go up into the trees through what we call the ladder effect. And the last part that I want to leave you on that is when you were talking about um, trees and stuff around your house, at least 10 feet away from any chimneys above your house and also on your chimney make sure you have a, a screen that's up there so when you have a fire hopefully you're not going to need to do that in the summertime of course but anytime that you might have a fire going that we don't get sparks coming out of your chimney that can land in dried brush or stuff and, and create a fire. You know a lot of folks tend to think that uh, we don't have a big fire risk here in the Monterey Peninsula but just a reminder that you know a number of years ago we had the Pebble Beach fire. The Pebble Beach fire was in the summer and it was created you know, by a campfire <clears throat> that was left unattended and it burned up through some of the forest and got into what we call the wildland urban interface. And if you drive around the city of Monterey, especially up on the hill behind us here, you'll notice that we basically live in a forest. And that is what we call the wildland ur urban interface. So we were just speaking a little bit about a defensible space, you know, around your home. We also have a lot of open spaces out there. So one of the things I want to talk about now is fuel reduction. The city of Monterey actually has an active fuel reduction program where the city goes out and monitors um, open space, public lands, and works on reducing the fuel in those areas. We do that actively year round. One of the things we would like to do is, is strongly encourage, as we spoke about with the defensible space, is individual business owners and homeowners to do that as well. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about open fires. Um, open fires create a real threat to this wildland urban interface that we were talking about. And I just want to remind people that open fires are not allowed in the city of Monterey. The only time you can have an open fire is if you're using it to, to do some cooking. And to do that, a couple things have to be met. Number one, it needs to be in a safe place. Two, it needs to be in an approved container like a fire pit or something. And if you're talking, you know, you want to have a big fire to cook and roast like a pig or something, something, a couple things you might want to think about. Really be thinking about whether that's something you want to do because of the fire danger. Make sure your neighbors are aware of it. And you probably want to talk to the fire department about getting a special permit to do that um, because it's an exception to the normal rule of a small open fire for cooking. 